Hi, Strange Loop. I'm super excited to be here and talk to you about voice-driven development or what it means to write software using your voice. And before I get into the talk, I want to give you a quick caveat that this entire talk was created using my voice and it will be delivered using my voice as well. So, um, yeah, brought to you by my voice. Go next. And who am I? Uh, my name is Emily. I'm a software engineer. I work, uh, or I, you can find me on GitHub as Touche and on Twitter as at Yomili. I work at Fastly. Go next. At Fastly, we help uh, the most important, we're an edge cloud platform that helps the world's most important digital businesses. And generally, what that means is we help make the internet more reliable, faster, and more secure. And we are hiring, so if any of this sounds interesting to you, find me in, somewhere in the conference. Go next. I write code, mostly Perl, using my voice. Go next. Why? <laughs> right, why would I do that? Um, go next. And the reason is I was unfortunate enough to start struggling with some repetitive strain injury a couple years ago. Uh, it, and if you're not familiar, RSI is pain felt in your muscles, nerves, and tendons caused by repetitive and overuse. In our industry, that often means repetitive overuse of a keyboard or a mouse. And just uh, out of curiosity, if you're willing to share, I want to see in this room how many people have either experienced RSI or know someone who has experienced RSI. Raise your hand. Yeah, so this is like a good majority of the room. Go next. So first, when I was injured, I tried taking breaks from typing. I tried yoga, stretching. I wore the wrist braces. I tried uh, massage, acupuncture, chiropractor. Go next. I tried pain creams, anti-inflammatories, muscle relaxers. I went through rounds of occupational and physical therapies. I even got trigger point injections, were, which were as much fun as they sound. Go next. I had an ergonomic evaluation, which is where you have this fancy ergo evaluator come to your workstation and tell you that everything needs to be 90 degrees and you should maybe stand desk and you should have a split keyboard and like all this stuff. So did all that, got the split keyboard, two trackball mice so I can split the load, right hand, left hand, go next. I got to know all the specialty keyboards on the market and eventually ended up with the mitosis in the top left which is a group by keyboard, so it's really hard to replace if anything goes wrong. And um, mainly with that was I tried to reduce the load up from my pinkies onto my thumbs. And with all those modifications, it did give me a lot. Uh, it did help uh, significantly, but I was still feeling very frustrated. Go next. I was still in a lot of pain. Um, I went from, you know, at its worst, I could type maybe 30 minutes a day, and maybe I shouldn't have even been doing that, to maybe 30 to 40 minutes if I took long breaks in between, and I'm taking four a leave a day, and I'm doing some crazy, like, stretching routine, and even the time where I was working wasn't good quality. I was constantly being interrupted by my body. Uh, pain in your body is like an alert system, firing all the time. That is very distracting as you're working. So in general, it was just like a bad time. Go next. So I started getting some thoughts about, you know, well, what if I could just say things instead and remove my hand from the equation? What about this voice stuff? I saw a talk, you know, in 2013 from this guy who, like, did it. Maybe I could. Go next. So I started looking into it, and what I was expecting, especially writing Perl, I was expecting doing that by voice to go something like this. Go next. Video play. Open. Open parenthesis. Uh, go to beginning of document. Delete. O. Press O. Go to end of document. Press caps lock. Info. Need info. Press caps lock. Press caps lock. Info. <laughs> delete info. Press capital I. Delete, it, delete I. <laughs> Press capital I. Delete I. Press capital I. <laughs> Scroll. Press caps lock. <laughs> Press caps lock. 
delete, I scroll this conflict. <laughs> Don't scroll this conflict. <laughs> delete adult <laughs> scrolls conflict for. <laughs> delete adult scrolls conflict for. Delete adult scrolls conflict for. <laughs> Open parenthesis, dollar sign, string, comma, dollar sign, times, close parenthesis, equals, at, input, semicolon. <laughs> Correct the goals as important. Equal sign, at, input, semicolon. Equal sign, at, sign, input, semicolon. One. Okay. Really. Backspace. 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 Enter! <laughs> Correct string. One. Okay. Print. Dollar sign string. X. Dollar sign times. Correct print. <laughs> Print. 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 Two. Okay. Correct X. Times. X. Nine. Okay. Lowercase in the X. Semicolon. Enter. Go next. So that whole vi that video, I actually trimmed it for the purposes of this talk. Uh, the whole video is like 10 minutes long. So if you want more of that, there is more. <laughs> you can go find it on YouTube. The guy that made it, his screen or his user is scrubadub1. So look for that. Uh, so when I started looking into the the voice coding software that it, that was out there, what I found was much different than what I was expecting. So I'm going to show you a clip of me writing the same code that Scrubadub One was writing, except using my tool set that I, I use on a day to day. Uh, and I intentionally left a few mistakes in it so that you can see that like ed editing is is efficient as well. Go next. Video play. Base quote dash push semicolon. Enter. Out sign, phrase input, op equals, op input, all caps, info, push, semicolon, enter. Phrase close, arcs, all caps, input, push, semicolon, enter. Args, dollar phrase string, comma space, dollar phrase times, push, op equals, snip line. Paren, dollar phrase string, comma space, dollar phrase times, push, op equals, at sign, phrase input, semicolon, go up. Go left second, delete word, all caps info, go down, slot. Phrase print, space, dollar phrase string, Perl times, dollar phrase times, semicolon. <laughs> go next. Okay, so that's a little bit different, right? Maybe this is doable. Uh, so how? How does all that work? What technology goes into me writing a snippet of code like that? I'm going to dig into that a little bit. Go next. The tech I'm using, I've got a microphone. I'm really excited about my new fancy mic. These are really cool. Um, a, a good microphone makes a big difference. Using your built-in microphone on your Mac just isn't going to give you the kind of accuracy that you want. So a mic good microphone is key. Uh, I'm running Dag Dragon Dictation on my Mac. Dragon Dictation has been around for decades. People generally use it for writing documents, emails, you know, generally like spoken word. Um, I'm using that for now. Right now, that's just the voice engine piece. And the technology I'm really excited to tell everyone about today is Talon. Talon is where a lot of the, the magic comes for uh, what I'm doing. Go next. OK, so what is Talon? Talon is a hands-free software. Uh, it uh, runs on your Mac, although there's working on support for Linux and Windows currently. Uh, it works with a voice engine. Right now it's running on top of Dragon, but the author of Talon is very excited because we, he's working on a new open source voice engine based on Wave 2 letter that will ship soon with the Talon beta. And it's trained on 3,000 hours of audio, and it's very fast. 
is what he's saying. So I'm very excited about that, especially because uh, Dragon for Mac has been discontinued, and I'd really like to stop having to point people to eBay to find copies of it. So <laughs> really excited about that. Um, but so more about Talon, it's uh, programmatically configured with Python. So all of the commands that you see are not just like baked into Talon itself. They're things that are configured in Python scripts running on my laptop. So it's highly configurable. You can map voice command to this Python function, right? So really powerful stuff. It's also free. All the Talon software is free. The author has been working on it full time for two years now. And uh, he's an RSI sufferer himself. And he's committed to making this technology available for people who need it. So uh, if you are a kind soul and want to support the project or support myself, this Patreon is a great way to do that. Go next. So let's start with the ABCs or the ASDFs. How do you actually start typing keys in the keyboard? Go next. So if you start with the letter keys, you think you might say A and get A, or B, get B, right? But there's a problem with that. Uh, a lot of the letters in the alphabet, as pronounced, sound very similar to each other. So a, H, J, K, B, C, D, E, G, P, T, V, Z all sound very close. And I'm sure everyone here has been on a phone call where you've had to say M is in Mike, or N is in Nancy, or I is in ice cream, or something silly, because it's, it's really hard to spell a word and, and have it uh, clearly understood. So I don't want that kind of trouble with my, my voice dictation that I'm going to have to be correcting myself all the time. Go next. So the solution is to pick a set of words that are phonetically different enough from each other that they're not going to be confused. The, there is an alphabet like this that exists already, the NATO phonetic alphabet. And this is a common question we get. Why not use the phonetic alphabet? And the reason is not because of accuracy, but because of speed. A lot of these words, except for golf, are more than one syllable. So I don't want to say November over and over again, right? Like, nah. So <laughs> we design our own alphabet. Go next. This is the alphabet I use. It's mostly based on an alphabet that was put together by the author of Talon, who spent a lot of time finding words that wouldn't be confused with each other. Each of the words are like one syllable, very, very short, and they don't get confused with each other or other common commands that we use on a day to day. So that is my alphabet. Go next. OK, so we have arrived at the scary part of this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> live demo, you know, so, uh, but we're in it together, so we'll see how this goes. Um, I'm going to demo a few things for you. Uh, spelling some words, I'm going to show you numbers and symbols. I'm also going to show you how I get words and phrases and how I use some special formatters so that I can get the text formatted like I want. Talon demo. Harp each look look odd space, whale odd red look dip, dip, enter. One, two, three, enter. Pound, dollar, downscore, bang, bang, paren, r paren, bracket, r bracket, downscore, percent, enter. Phrase, hello, strange loop, enter. Kebab, strange loop, oops, enter. Enter. Kebab, strange loop. Doesn't like that. Let me just check something here. Enter. Enter. Kebab, strange loop. Enter. All caps, strange loop. Enter. Pack title, strange loop. Enter. Kebab title, strange loop. Yeah, enter. Kebab title, strange loop. Enter. Talent sleep. So I will say that this is not my normal acoustic environment. So <laughs> I expect that you know, things are probably a little less accurate than, than I would at, at home. But so far, not too, too much of a disaster. So let's continue. Um, I'm going to demo for you some homophones. So these are words that sound the same, but they're actually spelled different. How does my system know which word I mean? So I'm going to show you how I disambiguate those. I'm going to show you repetition. So in the video with scrub it up one you might have seen that you know, talent sleep. Sorry, I had to put the voice robot to sleep again. So um, repetition. So you, if you heard Scrub It Up One say backspace, backspace, you know, over and over again, that can get very annoying. So uh, we need a way to like repeat commands. I want to do this thing, but this many times. So I'll show you repeats. 
and I'll also demo for you some custom vocabulary that uh, these are words that were not included by default in my voice engine, but I needed to add them. And Talon gives me a nice way to do that. If the voice engine can accurately enough guess what the pronunciation is, then I can just add them and they'll just work. So I'll show you a few of those words. Talon mode. Enter. Phrase kernel. Select word. Phones. Enter. Phones bite. Pick three. Enter. Emoji monocle. Emoji monocle <laughs> 10. Enter. <laughs> Enter. <laughs> Emoji whale, fourth. <clears throat> Delete third. Enter. Phrase upsert. Enter. Phrase undeaf. Enter. Phrase mojo licious. Enter. Phrase pearl tidy. Enter. Phrase fastly. Enter. Phrase Spotify, enter. Talent sleep. Oh, and I forgot to mention, let me just make sure it heard me. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, that the, um, oop, oh gosh, I hate when I do that. Oh no. There's where it happens. Where is the, oh God. Hold on. Ooh. Oh gosh. We almost made it through with no problems. Okay, so <laughs> I was going to mention that the um, the repetition I use ordinal numbers, so it sounds a bit like go down Fourth Street, right? But for me, I wanted uh, a way to represent repeats that I already knew the rules up to however long I needed to, and I don't know what comes after once, twice, thrice, so <laughs> I use ordinals, which is maybe a bit uh, unexpected. Go next. Okay, so let's take what we just learned and expand it and see what it's like for me on a day-to-day -day when I'm writing code in my text editor, I'm using Git, I am pushing code to GitHub, and you, know, you can see a little bit more about how it all comes together. And caveat on this one, I had people ask me if I sped up the video. No, this is just the normal speed. Also, there's no edits, it's just me clicking record and end. Um, it is more rehearsed than probably the code I write on a day-to-day, -day, but this demo isn't about like showing you how fast I say things. It's more about showing you what the tool can do. So go next. Video play. CD Talon Emily. Git checkout new. Snake emoji search. Enter. Subble dot enter. Diffy up. Go file phrase emoji. Enter. Page. Spring 1.8. Push. Delete start. Tab. Dub quote, phrase emoji search, space dragon words. Push colon space phrase search comma. Spring one four slap slap. State def, phrase search, paren, mad. Push colon, slap. Phrase name op equals. Snake extract word, paren, mad, slap. Phrase emoji sun, op equals. Snake selection picker. Undo. Phrase set, paren, square. Snake emoji names, square. Phrase key, go right. Dot, phrase char, go right. Go left, space. For in, phrase key, go right fourth. Snake emoji names, dot, phrase keys. Paren, go right, space. Phrase if name in key, slap. Undo, stone. Delete word, phrase name in, space, slap. Pop, jump. Snake selection picker, args. Phrase title equals dub quote, title emoji, smear. Go left, sun, smear, comma, space. Phrase template equals dub quote, phrase picker, dot, harp trap mad look, smear, comma, space. Phrase data equals phrase emoji, sun. Jump start, spring three, slap, from import, dot, phrase utils, push, snake extract word, slap, from import. Dot phrase picker, push. Snake selection picker, go down, push, comma space. Snake emoji short names, delete word. Snake emoji short names, space, phrase as, space, 
Snake emoji names. Save. Go file. Praise picker. Enter. Spring three. Slap. In bracket. In percent. Pad. Phrase four. Item in data. Enter. Tag table row. Undo. Slap. Tag table row. Tag class count. Enter. Tag table data. Tag class pick. Undo. Undo. Tag class pick. Title pick. Space. Slap. Tag table data. In bracket, second, pad, phrase item. Go down, slap. In bracket, in percent, space. Each near dip, far odd red, space. Save. Emoji search moon. Cancel. Spring six. Jump fourth. Emoji search sound. Pick two. Space, save. Emoji search dog. Emoji search tree. Cancel. Focus I term. Run get status. Get add dot enter. Run get commit. Sit. Phrase add space. Delete delete. Dip dip space. Phrase emoji searching. Escape. Colon. Whale quench. Enter. <laughs> get push origin. Phrase emoji tab. Enter. <laughs> Focus Chrome. New window. Open Talon configs. Link. AirMad. Tab. 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 Go down third. Enter. Link. Sun mad. Escape. Page. Link. Dip. All right. That's the end of it. <laughs> so everyone seems to always giggle with the whale quench. And when I first gave this tech talk internally, uh, I had the well quench and everyone just like, well quench, there were well quench emojis later. And then I took it out from, I gave a similar talk to this earlier this year and I took out the well quench and people were so mad. So <laughs> I put it back in the demos, so it's there. Go next. And at the end, I have stickers. <laughs> so. <laughs> So if this makes you laugh, come see our sticker fairies down here. They'll help you out. Go next. I'm going to pivot and talk a little bit about the challenges of working by voice. Go next. But don't worry, I'll give you a few tips to deal with them. Go next. The learning curve, it's a little bit steep. We are so used to touch-based models, keyboards and mice. It's, it's a completely different part of your body you're using. Uh, it can be a little bit like a, of a learning curve to, to get started. Also, it's pretty new in the space. Uh, there's some conventions starting to form, but in general, most of us have like a, a bespoke setup where we've kind of globbed some scripts together, written some ourselves. Um, hopefully over time, these start to become a little bit more standardized and there's more tools that are built to help you learn and all that. Um, but it still is a little bit steep. Go next. But some tips, make sure you set aside some dedicated learning time. So what I did is, um, I set aside a couple weeks, just, I just want to focus on this and that's it. I'm not gonna, you know, write any code that's going to be shipped anywhere. I'm just going to dedicate my time to learning. I picked some code in my code base that was going to be pretty similar to what I'd be writing and I just tried copying it. Um, and that was a really great way for me to try it and then iterate on my talent setup and then, you know, keep going until I felt like I had some sort of like uh, efficiency. One thing that's really difficult is if you're injured and you're trying to learn this stuff, it requires typing to learn it, but you're trying to learn it so you don't have to type and it's kind of a chicken and egg problem. If you have some friends that don't mind pairing on this with you to, to be your hands for this part of it, I recommend that. I don't generally otherwise recommend that you should try to get people to type for you if you're injured. It's kind of, I don't know, I have opinions about that. But uh, for this in particular, yes, um, find friends to um, help pair with. Uh, remove time pressures. So what I mean by that is don't take on a big refactor while you're trying to also learn to voice code. You're, 
going to underestimate how much time you spend thinking while you're working, and you're probably going to miss a lot of stuff because you're instead of focused on your code, you're focused on inputting the code. Um, so take easy tickets, take things that aren't time sensitive. Also, communication with your team. Work with your team to make sure that any communication that doesn't have to happen in real time in Slack, in a long scroll, uh, you know, move it to the GitHub PR, move it to the JIRA ticket instead, so that you aren't in a position where you either have to reach for a keyboard or you're left behind the conversation. My team has, has been very supportive of all of this, so um, thank you to my wonderful team out there. Also, leverage the talent community. There are, there are p other people like me. I'm not the only one. Um, that are, We all hang out in the talent slack, and we're happy to help and, and share our scripts and everything. So go next. Tools with poor accessibility. So this is probably my biggest challenge right now. Most of the time when I have trouble using a thing with voice, it's not because of my tool set or my setup. It's most often the most frustrating things are when I'm working on a tool uh, or a website that was not built with accessibility guidelines. And those are things that I can't fix myself. And I have to spend a lot of time trying to work around. And it puts me in really awkward situations like I have some right now where our team relies on tools that I cannot use without a keyboard or mouse. And I have to either, like, I don't know, go plead to the company and be like, hey, can you really like prioritize this? You know? Or um, you know, do I make the entire team we have to shift to a whole other thing just because of me? Like, it's not great. So go next. I have some requests for you all that you should make accessibility a priority. Don't lock out users from using whatever you're building. Make, uh, follow accessibility guidelines. There's a lot of great resources out there. There's some really great talks at this conference even. So educate yourselves. Uh, it really shouldn't be the afterthought. Build your software as if you might need it someday. Because I certainly didn't expect to be here. I don't want to be ominous, but, <laughs> but maybe I'm being ominous. Um, I didn't expect to be here. And uh, you, know, you don't know what is ahead of you in the future. And build the tools as if you, that you would want if you were in a situation of needing those accessibility features. So go next. Voice strain. So what happens if you talk to your computer for eight hours a day? You might put some strain on your vocal cords. Go next. But there are ways to uh, help with that. Stay hydrated. You notice I have my water up here. Uh, if you are working in a dry climate, you might get a humidifier. That helps. I have one at home. Don't whisper and don't shout. So it turns out shouting is kind of obvious, but whispering is more of a strain on your voice than talking at a normal, normal tone. Uh, some people will get voice coaches. So you hire someone, much like singers or, or whatnot, have voice coaches to teach them how to use their instrument and keep it healthy and get, get your, your wear on it. Um, that's also an option. Go next. Go next. Open offices. So I'm not here to add to the pile of opinions about whether open offices are good or bad. But adding a microphone is a little bit of a challenge. There are solutions, though. So I'm going to walk you through a few. Go next. A steno mask. So I did not know these existed. And every picture I found of these was interesting. Uh, <laughs> but. But they're very, like, they're very useful, and people like me um, and, and other voice coding folks find them really useful. They are good for dealing with background noise and giving you privacy in, in what you're, what you're uh, saying. So um, for open offices, you might get some people going, what are you doing? But you know, they do work, and they do re work really well. These are actually the marketing pictures for, for these as well. So <laughs> go next. Acoustic pods. So I know at least one person whose company bought him a fancy glass cube that he gets to work in with like soundproofing and everything that's very cool. Um, so this is another option if you know your company has some money to, to buy you a cube. <laughs> Go next. Remote work. So I do have an office, or I do have a desk in our office, and I go in sometimes. I've got a little space sort of off to the side. Some of my peers have called it the place where you might put a Xerox machine, but it works for me. Otherwise, I'm at home uh, because when I'm at home, it turns out it's better for me actually to be away from my keyboard so I don't try and touch it. So I'm on the floor, I'm laying on pillows, I might be like, you know, deploying software from, you know, Warrior 2 yoga pose, you know, whatever. 
Um, so yeah, I, I thank you Fastly for being so great with remote workers. Go next. Not so big challenges. These are things that I thought would be hard, but they actually aren't. So supporting specific programming languages. I thought I'd need to build up like a whole library of stuff just for Perl or a whole library, you know, for Go or whatever. Uh, but it turns out, um, if I want to write Go tomorrow, I can just start writing Go. Of course, there will be things that I find that I might want to optimize, but they're just optimizations. Uh, it, there's nothing like I have to spend a bunch of time to build up support just to like start using another language. The other one is building tools with talent. So this has been surprisingly fun and like easy. I've built a lot of my own tools myself, and they're like quick, easy wins. And I've built anything from just like uh, shortcuts for certain key commands to uh, entire web views that'll pop up to show me what commands do I have for Git or what commands do I have for you know this other thing. Um, so it's really powerful, and you just save it to your Talon directory, and it's loaded in Talon and ready to go. It's pretty great. Go next. Okay. So why? I want to revisit why I'm here, why I'm doing all of this, why am I talking to my computer, and why am I here telling you about it? And um, I want to remind everyone that you know this isn't just some like weird software that's like funny to you know hear and, and interesting. It's literally what gives me access to my career and to my uh, computer. Uh, think about what it would be like if tomorrow you lost access to your computer. How much of your life is like in that device, right? Um, so this is what gives people like me or people who are otherwise unable to use a keyboard or mouse access. So it's very important. Go next. All right, some takeaways. Take care of your bodies. Get that ergo evaluation. Uh, <laughs> appreciate what it can do for you today. They're pretty amazing instruments after all. I hope that by now you will be convinced that there are people using speech to code in real life. We do exist. There's a small community of us. It's not just me. It wasn't, you know, I wasn't the first one, and, and there are, there's a group of us. Consider all your users when building and designing. If there's one takeaway I want you to have, is this one, please. Uh, <laughs> this is my plea. Um, consider all your users when building and designing. And if there's one like sort of thought leader moment I'm going to have, it's that I think the future is going to be a little bit more diverse than the keyboard mouse touch models that we've, we've been having. Uh, with, you're seeing this a little bit with um, voice assistants coming into popularity and home automation, Alexa, Siri. Uh, you're seeing voice coding. and um, You're also seeing some work not on voice, but other companies that are having like wearables that are going to you know, read your neurological signals and let you control a computer. So, the touch board, the, sorry, the touch based model of controlling your computer might not be the uh, default going forward at some point. So I think it's worth keeping that in mind and watching the space. So I think it'll be interesting. Go next. Thank you. Go next. Go next. Go next. Last slide. I'm going to do some questions, but first, go next. I did buy, yes, I did buy the whalequench.club domain. <laughs> um, and .club is very cheap, turns out. Um, the, so if you want more information, I just put together some, a blog post with uh, uh, you know, beginners, tutorials, things like that. You can find that there. Also, talentvoice.com is where you can find resources on Talon and the Talon Slack and all that. So. Um, I'll take your questions, and then don't forget at the end, stickers. So yes, question. Uh, how well does it work, and what do you need to do to use this in a keystroke-heavy tool like Emacs or IntelliJ? The question was, how hard is it to use it in a keystroke-heavy tool like Emacs or IntelliJ. IntelliJ? I'm not familiar with either of those, but like, is Emacs sort of like Vim? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to regret that comment later. Um, <laughs> uh, but um, so for Vim, for example, everything is just like letter keys, right? So that's pretty easy. Once you know the alphabet, you can get around Vim. You just say the, the alphabet keys for, to do whatever is equivalent, right? Oh, yeah. I forgot to demo that. Yeah. So modifiers are just control, shift, uh, you know. 
and you can combine those with other keys. So you can you can say like command air select all, uh, command you know whatever. So you can yeah you can combine them all, or you can make uh, shortcuts if you don't want to remember like three different keys. You can make a shortcut that's easier. Yep. So the question is, what do I do when I need to select certain things on the screen or draw specific shapes? Drawing shapes, that's a little bit more difficult. It depends on what I'm doing. If I'm drawing like a, a diagram for like a design document or something, I, I just learned the like the dot thing where you can like write code and it'll generate your things for you. That was really cool. Um, when I need to select things on the screen, um, I use Vimium in the browser and that's my first go-to because I can, you know, show me all the links on the page and then I can just, li with the, using the alphabet, click whatever I need. If that doesn't work because this site doesn't have the things that are links as actual links, then I might try the tab method where I'm going to try tabbing through the page to see if I can get to the thing. And uh, usually that results in frustration and, you know, sadness. But, um, <laughs> but those are two ways that I try to do that. Right. Yeah, so the question was commenting on the Vista video where uh, it was misunderstanding the delete and instead writing the word delete and how do you, you know, make sure you're getting the right thing. What if you want the word delete, right? So the, the, the way that we handle this is the whole thing is designed to be command based. So if I want actual text, then I have to preface, uh, I say a command that means this is text following this. And so if I want the word delete, I say phrase delete. And then that should give me delete. Otherwise, it's all it all should map to a command. Do you still have any like can you use a keyboard in like emergency situations or mouse or or you like purely text Yeah, so the question is whether I can use a keyboard or mouse at all and or am I purely speech based? I use speech as much as possible. I'm still dealing with my injury. So as much as I can get off the keyboard while I pursue healing and all that is, is good for me, there are still times where I uh, will use a keyboard or mouse for things. Um, some other voice coders will use an eye tracker device to get the mouse functionality. I tend to like to lay on the floor and stuff, so <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I've gone, I, I haven't gone that route, but um, I still do reach for the keyboard and mouse every now and then, but I try to keep it very minimal. I'm just like touching a few things and then I step away. The question was whether a switch would be in combination with voice useful. Maybe. It really depends on your workflow and what you would need it for. For me, I don't generally like to be standing or sitting at the desk, so I don't want to have to be near a foot pedal. But, you know, that's just me. The question was, if I fully heal, would I go back to the keyboard and mouse, or would I stay voice? At this point, there are things that are easier for me by voice, and I'd probably still reach, like, there are sometimes if I'm on the keyboard, and then I'm like, oh, wait, this is way easier with the mic. Where's the mic? And I get the mic, you know. So I'm, at this point, I don't know. I think I probably would keep doing what I'm doing. The question was, it appears I'm becoming more of a user interface expert and whether that's shaping my opinions on what, how things should be built. That's the question, right? Or your career. Or, or my career. OK. <laughs> <laughs> so expert might be a strong word, but I'm definitely learning a lot about UIs and how things are built and how they're used and everything. Um, and I'm trying to learn enough that I can file bug reports that won't be ignored. So uh, that's, that's my goal. Um, but. I don't know, in terms of where my career is going, I, 
I'm not sure. I feel like I'm just now getting back to being able to think about that. You know, I'm just, okay, let's get back to my actual normal programming and being able to do work and, you know, be productive and think about where my career is headed. Um, but certainly, I think voice technology will be, at, at the very least, a side project. It's something I'm really passionate about now, and I find it fun. So, yeah. I think one more. Do we have time for one more? Oh, we should be ending. Last one. Where I could write and ship code. It, the, the question was how long did it take me to be able to write and ship code? And I would say it took me a few weeks just to get comfortable in the, the editor, but a lot of that is because I had to write my own library for Sublime. There wasn't one yet. So it would probably be faster for someone else coming on now. Uh, but I definitely think I like shipped some things at least within a month or two. Um, it really depended because it, took me a lot longer than maybe it would someone else who wasn't as severely injured as I was at the time, because if I only have a couple hours to type a day, that doesn't give me a lot to go off of in terms of making progress that day, you know? So, yeah, that's it. Anyway, thank you all for coming. Thank you for listening.